Hey, hey, welcome back everyone. In this series, we're developing an aircraft simulation from the ground up. Let's go. Up to this point, we've introduced the primary components of a full aircraft simulation. And in the last lecture, we covered the six degree of freedom equations. Here, we include the Euler kinematic equations to describe aircraft attitude. We also create a simple sphere model and run the simulation for the first time. Our goal is to create a set of state equations to instantaneously determine aircraft orientation in our simulation. Now, toward this, our objectives are to one, understand Euler angles, two, distinguish between Euler angular rates and body resolved angular rates, three, we want to develop the Euler kinematic equations, four, we want to implement those equations in Python and construct our first instance of a working simulation. And lastly, we're gonna use that simulation to make sure it's working correctly. We'll simply drop a sphere, check out gravity, check out attitude. Recall we're operating under a flat earth assumption, which is just a local approximation of the oblate rotating earth. Here's a horizontal plane with the north and east directions and the down direction to comprise the northeast down coordinate system. Here's an aircraft with its body carried coordinate system. We highlight the aircraft YZ plane and where it intersects the horizontal plane. Now, how can we quantify the orientation of the body coordinate system with respect to the northeast down coordinate system? The answer is through a sequence of rotations. First, project XB to the horizontal plane. Then we rotate the body coordinate system about Zn by the yaw angle psi. The rate of yaw rotation is aligned with Zn. Next is the pitch rotation theta about the line of intersection between the planes. The rate of rotation about this line is theta dot. Finally, the body Y and Z axes are rotated by the angle phi about the body X axis. The rate of rotation is phi dot. To summarize, we have the Euler yaw angle and Euler yaw rate, the pitch angle and pitch rate, and the Euler roll angle and roll rate. And having gone through this, we complete our first objective. The orientation of the aircraft with respect to the inertial frame is defined with three Euler angles, phi, theta, psi, representing aircraft roll, pitch, and yaw. In index notation, phi, theta, psi have indices one, two, and three, respectively. These Euler angles are very useful. For example, suppose we have a vector resolved in the northeast down coordinate system. And we want that vector resolved in the body coordinate system. This involves some sort of transformation. We essentially just went through this transformation graphically, involving three distinct planar rotations. The first was a planar right-hand rotation about the yaw angle. And then we did a right-handed pitch rotation about theta. And finally, we showed a right-handed rotation about the roll angle phi. Note the order of the rotations that transform a vector in NED to body is 3, 2, and 1. Since matrix multiplication does not commute, it's important that we establish a convention and stick to it. And for aircraft modeling and simulation, that order is 3, 2, 1. The three planar rotation matrices now then multiplied together create a direction cosine matrix or DCM for short. That is determined from the instantaneous Euler angles. Now what if we wanted to reverse this operation and go from body to northeast down? It's simple. Left multiply by the inverse of the DCM. And due to the properties of the rotation matrices, its inverse is its transpose. So the transpose of DCM from NED to body is the DCM for body to NED. Substituting this fact, we get the reverse transformation. Great. 
Focus on this inverse for a moment, it being just the transpose of the DCM applied to each of the planar rotations. Distributing the transpose operation and then substituting, we get a bit more fidelity in the formula. We can see it involves a different sequence of rotations than going from N to B, here going from B to N. What is this telling us? First, note the order of the rotations is reversed. Phi, theta, psi. And the transpose of the planar rotation is the inverse of the planar rotation. That is the opposite direction of the rotation. This means that going from body to NED involves First, a left-hand planar rotation through the roll angle, then a left-hand rotation through theta, and finally a left-hand rotation through psi. Undoing the 3 2, 1 transformation is the 1 2 3 sequence involving opposite rotations. And this makes intuitive sense. Let's go through the 1 2 3 sequence. First, the opposite roll rotation then the opposite pitch rotation, and finally the opposite yaw rotation. Note the Euler angular rates are resolved in non-orthogonal directions. So we can't simply apply the DCM for NED to body, but we can operate on the phi theta side dot vectors to align them with each body coordinate direction. First, we will rotate psi dot onto the body yz plane through the pitch angle theta. To do this, we apply the planar rotation about theta, c theta to psi dot. Now, the rotated psi dot is on the body yz plane. Also note that theta dot is on the yz plane too. Our second step involves rotating these vectors by the roll angle phi to align them with the body y and z axes. To do this, we multiply these vectors by c phi, the planar rotation matrix. Finally, we note that the roll rate phi dot is already along the body coordinate x-axis. So we have the roll, pitch, and yaw angular rates in the body coordinate system. We simply add each element of the vectors together to form the body resolved angular rate vector PQR. This accomplishes our second objective. Now notice that the Euler rates on the right-hand side of the equation are separated from the body-resolved angular rates. We need to solve these equations for the Euler angular rates phi theta psi dot, and then with them on the left-hand side, we have our desired Euler kinematic equations that we can integrate to instantaneously determine aircraft attitude. We'll get to the Euler kinematic equations by expressing Euler angular rates as a function of body angular rates. Here we have our angular rates in the body coordinate system. With the previous relation to the Euler angular rates already established. We can write this as a matrix times the Euler angular rates. And we can invert this matrix to solve for the Euler rates in terms of the body angular rates. Our result is a set of three nonlinear differential equations. What is the state of this set of equations? Of course, it's the Euler angles phi, theta, and psi, and they're related to the body angular rates through the instantaneous pitch and roll angles 
contained in the matrix. These are the Euler kinematic equations. Our third objective is complete. All right, let's program the Euler kinematics and create our first working simulation. To orient ourselves, let's review the simulation process. The initialization of the simulation involves selection of a vehicle model and setting the initial conditions for the state equations. The initial time is set as the current time, Ti, where I is an index that counts points in time from the initial to the final step. Starting with the initial conditions, we evaluate the right-hand side of the state equations, which is input to a simple first-order numerical integration method. Here it's forward Euler. The state at i plus 1 is obtained and stored. And if the index i plus 1 is less than the final index, call it n, the index i receives an increment by 1. And the right-hand side is updated and the process continues until ultimately we integrate the final time step and the simulation results are completed. The data is post-processed if necessary, the results are plotted or even animated, and a simulation is complete. Now that we've added the kinematic equations to the equations of motion, we have a total of nine states. These are the translational and rotational six degree of freedom equations previously covered and the three Euler kinematic equations. The codes from the last lesson remain intact with the main program file as the driver, a forward Euler numerical integration method, and the governing equations, now containing a total of nine degrees of freedom in the script Flat Earth EOM. Let's start by inspecting the driver. Here we are in Visual Studio Code in the main program script. On the left-hand side, you can see the folders and the main program script in the main folder. We first import libraries and then functions. And then we go into the initialization. We call that part one. We're now defining a vehicle and it's just a simple sphere, if you can call it a vehicle at this point. Something to simulate. Here's the radius, the mass, the moment of inertia. Here's a dictionary that contains the mass and moment of inertia properties. And now we go to the initial conditions. We define the initial conditions state-wise according to our naming convention. And then we put those variables those initial conditions into an array. We call it X naught. Going on, we set our initial time condition and then the final time and the time step size. Part two, we numerically integrate the governing equations. So here we are making the time array. We pre-allocate the solution vector. We assign the initial condition to the solution vector. And then we numerically integrate forward in time with our forward Euler method. And each variable is plotted as an array of subplots. There's a total of eight, and we do not plot the yaw angle. That's what we leave out. Now let's look at the numerical integrator. Here's our forward Euler function. Our input arguments are the function itself, that's the governing equations, the time, the state solution, the time step size, and our vehicle model data. Some upfront comments about what's going on, and then a simple for loop to numerically integrate forward in time. And finally, the governing equations contained in the Flat Earth EOM script. Here we are in Flat Earth EOM. It's a function. We start with importing libraries. Our function has three input arguments now. Before we just had the instantaneous time and state. Now we are inputting the vehicle model. 
There's a description of what's going on. This script returns the time derivative of each state for numerical integration. To return that efficiently, we pre-allocate the dx vector. It has dimension 12. And to be very transparent about how we're implementing the equations, we take the state vector x and we assign a variable with the name, the coordinate system, and the units to those individual elements of x. We get our mass and moments of inertia. We still have placeholders for our air data and atmospheric model. Our gravity is normal to the Earth tangential system. So it's just pointing down and then we resolve it in the body coordinate system. So as the vehicle pitches and rolls, gravity will point in the body reference system in different directions. Of course, it's always pointing down in the northeast down coordinate system. External forces and moments set to zero because we do not have an aerodynamic model nor do we have an atmospheric model. So it's as if this sphere is just flying through space. Going on to our translational and rotational equations, we reviewed these last time, so we won't dwell on them here. But what is new are the Euler kinematic equations on lines 120 through 127. So we can compare these equations to the Euler kinematics that we more or less derived in the lesson. And finally, our position equations, which are just placeholders, as mentioned before. And these will be updated in the next lesson. Now that we have everything together, let's do a few runs for the sphere, and make sure things are working correctly. Let's first verify our gravity models working. To do this, we'll drop a sphere by setting the initial conditions to zero and letting the sphere accelerate under gravity. Recall, there's no atmospheric model and no aerodynamic model. So the fear will simply continue to accelerate according to the Earth gravitational constant. Our initial condition is nothing but zeros. And we're gonna save the image produced from this simulation with the name sphere drop test underscore one. This plot contains all states except the yaw angle. What do we observe? The sphere accelerates along the positive z-axis, which is aligned with the gravitational direction. The sphere is accelerating at approximately 9.81 meters per second squared. We observe the constant acceleration with the straight line in the z-axis velocity plot with a final velocity of just under 100 meters per second, consistent with expectations. There are no other forces acting on the sphere in the x-axis or the y-axis, so velocities there remain zero. Further, there's no moment acting on the sphere, so the angular rates P, Q, and R are all zero. This means that the Euler angles are also all zero. Throughout the simulation, the sphere z-axis remains normal to the horizon and the sphere simply falls under gravity. Now let's test the sphere if it were initialized with its y-axis pointed down. To do this, we simply set the roll angle to pi over two and rerun the simulation. Set roll to positive 90 degrees. We'll save the plot the underscore two. As expected, we observe acceleration in the y-axis. At first glance, it may also seem like the sphere is accelerating in the z-axis, which of course should not happen 
since the z-axis is now normal to gravity in this case. But more careful inspection shows the scale is 1 e to the minus 15, essentially zero, close to machine double precision. The roll angle remains a constant pi over 2, and all other signals show zero. The effect of the 90 degree roll rotation is completely consistent with our expectations. Let's do another rotation, this time 90 degrees about the pitch axis, so that aligned with gravity, x points in the opposite direction. Since this makes the x-axis point upward, we would expect just above minus 100 meters per second of the u-velocity component with all other states zero except pitch angle, which will hold a constant pi over two value as initialized here. Set the pitch angle to 90 degrees. Save this one as three. And this is exactly the result we obtain. Interestingly, we still have order one e to the minus 15 error in the vertical velocity, which is effectively zero. But this is a numerical error possibly in the trigonometric functions with an inexact pi over two inserted. This error may propagate through the numerical integrator at each time step, causing it to increase in time. This is all speculation and could be determined with further investigation. Of course, if we were to set the scale from minus 0.04 to 0.04, as with the y-axis velocity, for example, we would not even notice this error. In this lesson, we've covered Euler angles or aircraft attitude. We've covered angular rates, the Euler kinematic equations, and we now have a bare bones simulation up and running. In our next lesson, we're going to program the navigation equations, and this will allow us to determine the position of our aircraft over the earth. We're also going to add realism to the simulation with an atmospheric model and an aerodynamic model for our sphere. The description of attitude in this lesson is largely based on John Blakelock's book, Automatic Control of Aircraft and Missiles. Of course, Stevens and Lewis, our primary reference, could be consulted here as well. The third edition is the most up-to-date, but for everything we do in this series, either edition will work fine. Access this lesson and more at learngnc.com. If you're a Patreon subscriber to Learn Guidance and Control, thank you so much. Your support keeps this content coming. If you're interested in gaining access to all the codes in this analysis, lesson previews, in-depth video discussions, code tutorials, then for less of the price of a Big Mac, check out the link in the description. That's it for now. Good luck. We'll see you next time.